Okay, greetings everybody. Here we are coming up on lecture four. My, my uh, previous lectures were kind of long, so I'm going to try and make this really short. Um, mainly because you've got a big week ahead of you, quite a bit of homework, and then a midterm exam. Um, so we'll be going over a, a couple chapters of Bourgeois and one chapter of Langer. Um, first chapter in uh, uh, Bourgeois is to consider, you know, does IT matter? And uh, that's just to get you thinking um, uh, because, you know, at, at, at one point back really before the PC revolution, uh, Carr made the argument uh, that, that perhaps it doesn't matter. It doesn't add to pro uh, productivity. But as we know, uh, um, uh, generally speaking, that's not true. But it, it's good food for thought. And um, this chapter goes into, you know, how IT adds a competitive uh, advantage to businesses and, you know, failure to adapt and, and all of that will uh, will cause the business to basically slide into obsolescence. I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember Blockbuster video and renting videos. That's, you know, kind of the example of uh, one example, Sears, the, the, the department store Sears, uh, no, you know, they didn't adapt and you know, Amazon and eBay and Alibaba and uh, just kind of, you know, that the modern technology just sort of overwhelmed them and, and they're rendered obsolete. So there's, you know, there's some factors in this chapter that uh, go into what causes businesses to either adapt or not. Um, so, uh, yeah, the productivity par paradox, it's, it's uh, difficult to measure productivity, but um, really, if you think about it, uh, what does it take to to type a letter uh, compared to what it cost, what, what, what does it take to uh, to reproduce it on a word processor? If you had a copy of a letter that, and you were a secretary and your boss wanted you to send that to somebody else, you'd have to retype the entire letter except for what little changes he had. As opposed to now, you just make a little bit of little change in your word processor and bam, hit print. And uh, if he, if something was wrong, if something was mistyped back in the day, ah, uh, what a pain. So that's just one small example. And then if you look at, you know, the, the productivity gains from larger scale things like email and, and enterprise social media, uh, supply chain management, you know, the, the uh, in inventory control, the productivity of, of factory workers from CNC machining and robotics. Um, it's, it's just kind of funny. Uh, to, uh, to even contemplate that. But I leave you to your own opinions and your own research. <laughs> we are uh, information technology professionals, so we are going to be a little biased. Um, but there's some good information in this chapter, so uh, check that out. So uh, yeah, creating and sustaining superior performance and uh, uh, the, all of the, uh, the support activities underneath there that are enabled by information uh, systems you know, human resources, try and run a human resources department without, uh, you know, keyword searching and, and uh, um, resume data mining, you know, forget about it. And procurement, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the, the management of, of ordering supplies, managing those, uh, those raw materials throughout the operational uh, manufacturing process, uh, forget about it. So, the uh, yeah, like I said, this the chap this these next two chapters, actually four chapters in bourgeois, uh, start to go into kind of the strategic advantage, uh, the strategic level view of information systems as opposed to just the uh, you know the components that we all know and love. Um, Porter's five forces. This is a a really good economic model, and you will see this Porter. And Porter's five forces, you'll see this all over the place as far as measuring, uh, you know, what the, what it, what it takes to, uh, uh, to get something new into the market and what keeps innovations out of the market. Uh, that's a pretty decent, uh, argument. Um, it's all driving factors. <clears throat> um, of course, information systems allow you to deliver your product or service at a lower cost, uh, particularly for organizations where information technology 
is uh, a supporter, as Langer likes to call him. But this is bourgeois, but Langer, you know, calls drivers and supporters. They can uh, let you deliver something that's differentiated, um, especially if you look at the tools uh, that Information Systems provides as far as uh, the design and prototyping and, and delivery of, of products. And, um, and Information Systems totally lets you focus on a specific market, um, particularly with uh, data-driven advertising and of course uh enabling innovation with um you know the, the collaboration and like i said the the design tools and um uh, prototyping you can do virtual reality um so uh edi um this is uh, uh um where businesses communicate with businesses via electronic documents not hand typed out paper invoices and whatnot um the at the bottom of the screen there you'll see uh, edi documents that's that's how uh businesses communicate now um they don't invoice each other with you know mailing a bill to each other um so uh yeah that 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 whole um business process and again that's that's the next chapter of bourgeois but uh how are business processes enabled by electronic data interchange? Um, you, you just, you couldn't go back to normal business. Um, and of course, collaborative systems. Uh, this is my, um, my uh, true love. Uh, Google Drive's okay, but it just lets you edit on a document. SharePoint is a, got a whole lot more to it. If you uh, read my dissertation, I'm out there on, uh, 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 ProQuest. I did a, my dissertation on on uh, basically SharePoint um, and its ability to preserve knowledge and transfer that knowledge between employees. Uh, Cisco WebEx is similar to Zoom. It's a or, or Skype for business. Um, GitHub is your software engineer repository where you can share uh, coding solutions uh, regardless of language all across the planet. And, and uh, more than that, it's more configuration management. So. Uh, elements of your code. Some of you are, are, are software engineers and you know GitHub way more than I do. And then of course decision support systems allow uh, uh, experts to collaborate uh, using data to drive those decisions and it, uh, it, it, they're really good when they focus on a particular type of data and a particular type of decision. Um, so you know uh, companies have to decide um, when they're gonna uh, upgrade and what that what what that IT uh, uh, investment is going to do for for letting them differentiate themselves among uh, um, among uh, their competitors and of course you know you can't just buy technology uh, that second bullet good management matters you've got to manage uh, the change you've got to manage the procurement manage the training, manage the adoption, and as Langer puts it, you know, the strategic integration of that new technology into the organizational culture. Um, and yeah, uh, IT definitely causes competitive shakeup. So the next one for bourgeois is uh, business processes. So you, you need to know what a business process is, whether that's the process of developing software, so that it can be fielded and turned into a competitive advantage or turned into a product if you're a, a, an application developer. Um, there's uh, you know different systems. These are the, uh, the objectives of the chapter. I don't need to read them. Um, culminating in the ERP system, but uh, uh, a process, a business process, just a series of tasks that result uh, in accomplishing a goal, whether that's, you know, making a cheeseburger at McDonald's and sliding it down the, uh, the rack to the customer, or it's the process of reordering, uh, supplies when the time comes, or it's the process of developing strategy at the high, at the highest level. Um, anything can be a business process. Um, but definitely uh, no business process is going to be effective if it's not documented. Um, and that's what the next couple of things on this slide get into is different ways to annotate a process 
to make sure that it's understandable and repeatable um, by the employees. Um, so uh, ERP, this is, look at the, read the different circles on the, uh, on this diagram. Um, it's, it's every functional area. You, you, you might've heard those called, you know, functional support areas, functional area applications. Um, uh, ERP tries to tie it all so that every functional area is tying into a central database so that the, the, when the data is related, it can be used by management and, uh, for, you know, competitive advantage, uh, for data mining or a data warehouse. Um, strategy development. So uh, that that's all an ERP is, and and that's still the jury is still out on ERP. That, that everybody knows that it's it's a it's the way to go, but getting there is tough because you have to change everything in your company. And sometimes, and like in the case of a uh, SAP, S A P SAP, um, you you almost it's almost easier and cheaper to change the way your company does business than it is to pay uh, developers to customize SAP. So uh, keep that in mind if you're involved in ERP uh, implementation at all. Um, and business, business process management, this is you know, all about looking at processes and making sure they're e e efficient. Um, and definitely uh, bringing in the lower level uh, employees makes them feel empowered, makes them feel like they have a voice uh, in the company. And companies need to have a, a way for, for employees to report inefficiencies and suggestions for improvement. And uh, by doing this, you, 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 you make sure that your company uh, um, is utilizing best practices as observed by the people that are really living it day to day. So. Uh, Business process reengineering. This is a cyclical process where you look at what you're doing, look at the intended outcome, uh, look at your your uh, your actual outcome, uh, and then feedback that loop to see what you can do differently um, to uh, to to make that process more more effective, more efficient, less steps. Um, so the next part of this week's reading is more Langer, uh, organizational transformation and the balanced scorecard. Uh, this is going to require some in-depth reading. Again, um, Langer tends to be uh, a little more in-depth, and he's uh, he's really uh, promoting his own, you know, responsive organizational dynamism. Um, and, and how things relate to his theory. So uh, mostly from this chapter, what I want you to do is read it, but then I want you to watch, you know, a 10 minute video, go out on YouTube, find a 10 minute video uh, that speaks to you about balanced scorecard. Cause that is an indus industry standard way of, uh, of measuring um, uh, practices and, and uh, developments and, and how they feed into uh, the overall processes of the company. Um, so uh, organizational transformation, that, that is all about companies adapting to change, the whole or, you know, transformative dynamism. Um, like, like, you know, the internet happens. Some companies adapted, some went under. Um, and then the mobile phone happened. And some companies adapted and, and came up with, with good apps that allowed you to access your content uh, mobily and others didn't and they fell by the wayside. So there are, you know, there are these, these uh, disruptive technologies come in and uh, um, organizational, if, uh, uh, an organization that's not able to transform uh, will, be, will be left behind. And, and uh, Langer goes into some, uh, some good uh, uh, background framework with uh, organizational transformation. And we've seen this, uh, this uh, um, uh, where supporters turn into dry or drivers turn into support organizations eventually. Um, and we talked about how it, uh, it, it, um, uh, it factors into the organizational culture. You've seen this organization, this uh, diagram before. So uh, 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, take a look at Aldrich's uh, process. Um, see what you think. It's uh, it's again, it's it's a it's a framework. It's a way of looking at the way uh, that technology comes in, makes a change. You uh, you you see what what works and what doesn't. Um, where you want to go because you can't just jump on any given technology. Uh, and then you decide uh, what's going to be retained and, and maybe what, what's going to be uh, uh, outsourced. Um, and then this is the, the, uh, the, the, the industry standard balance scorecard. Okay, this is something you need, to, you need to check out another reference or two outside of Langer so that you see that it's not just Arthur Langer talking. It, this is something that... Uh, um, that is a, a strategic guide guideline framework. Um, like I said, I, I like YouTube videos, so go try and go out to YouTube and, uh, and find a video or two that you, uh, that you're willing to watch about this and then you'll understand. But Langer adopted, uh, the balance scorecard for his responsive organizational dynamism, but it's very similar. The phases are, uh, uh, similar and he goes into the differences there. So, uh, um, the, uh, the next section is about, uh, discourse within the company and how to map, uh, discourse and, and foster discourse between, uh, uh, hierarchies, uh, uh, horizontally, vertically, and between functional areas horizontally. Um, and then, yeah, knowledge creation. This was, this was what I did my dissertation about knowledge creation and, and, uh, the culture of sharing knowledge. So uh, make sure you read that and how it how it's linked, how your your culture of organizational uh, knowledge is linked to uh, your uh, your strategy. So uh, our assignments this week, we've got a discussion. Um, uh, again, always uh, your initial response is due by Thursday night, and uh, two replies to your fellow students by uh, Saturday night. But uh, look here, guys, pay particular attention to the third bullet on this slide. And it's in the instructions in the discussion. Uh, no more, I wanna add a few points, okay? Don't just reply and start uh, lecturing your classmate, okay? If I see that, um, I'm going to give you a zero for the five points. Um, what I want you to do is ask them a question about what they posted. So they're going to they're going to explain uh, the productivity paradox and their thinking. Okay, that's what you're going to post. You're going to you're going to post your thinking and include a, a relevant uh, work example from your work experience. So everybody here we're we're sharing uh, work experience. So don't just, you know, reply, you know, hit uh, reply and just start typing, uh, you know, uh, productivity paradoxes, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to see that. I want you to ask them a question, and I want that question to be based on what they shared. Clear enough, right? There you go. Guys are going for a master's degree. Certainly, everyone can handle junior high school level middle school level instructions. All right, enough about that one. Next week four is bourgeois, the usual study questions. Uh, although these and, and exercises, I you know, uh, coincidentally, uh, both are one through 10 and exercise two. Um, please submit those in one word document. Um, and again, bourgeois is all about uh, business processes and the strategic level view of information systems. Um, Langer's uh, week four, uh, notice in yellow, its assignment varies slightly from the syllabus. So, you know, the uh, the assignment in the syllabus is out there on the internet. I found it on the internet already. Um, so I I modified it and I'm I'm changing it to what's in here because I don't want uh, anybody to be tempted by downloading that that uh, assignment that's already on the internet. Okay. That's a uh, week four Langer, and then the big one, brrr, midterm exam. So it's a, a uh, essay question 
that no one has ever seen before on earth. Until you activate the exam, you'll have 90 minutes, 90 minutes to answer a, uh, a, uh, a an essay. I'm looking for a paragraph or so. Um, it's worth 300 points, 30% of your course grade. If you, if you don't have the Langer text, if you've never read Langer, and you're just going on what you see out there on the internet, it's going to be very hard for you to accomplish. But it is open book, right? I mean, you know, there's no way I can keep you from, from opening up your Langer text and uh, going back over it and seeing uh, um, what you think the answer will be to the question, which will resolve, you know, uh, revolve around organizations, culture, technological change, strategic alignment, all the stuff that we've uh, talked about in Langer uh, chapters one through five. Okay. As always, uh, I bid you adieu and I will see you in the classroom.